What's up racers? Welcome back to another video on Gran Turismo Sport. This video then, a highlights reel or my perspective from the races from the Jev Team Racing versus Drivers Room that happened this Saturday just gone. And before we get into the video as the orange and blue Astons tear down to T1 here at Nürburgring Grand Prix Circuit, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone who watched the live stream and to the uh, livery makers Arden Blue for us, Jev Team Racing and whoever made the uh, ones for Drivers Room. Very cool, looking very professional. As we come into T1 then, it is going to be remarkably clean. Just a little bit of a tap there in the side of Ronin, but apart from that, everything's clean. Into T2 then, still a load of cars, a little bit of contact there between all of the orange boys. Another little bit of contact there between blue and orange, but Rob just slices through the orange pack there and is up into 10th place. We see ourselves up to 11th, so up three places on the first couple of corners. And look at that. The blue swarm is now swarming the orange cars in front. A little bit elbows out there, a little bit bumpy, but we're just going to settle in and hopefully those boys will settle down. It's always a little bit crazy on the first lap in these events, especially when you start from a grid start as well. Coming out here then, Daz is up on the inside, but we do have the slipstream from Jason in front of us. Now coming down to this hairpin right here, I'm gonna try and hold it around the outside. What's gonna go for a move on the inside, but then decided against it, so we're just gonna hold it all the way around the outside. A Little bit of a tap there from Cam behind us, but nothing doing, so we just slip into 12th here. Not gonna make a move as we come up through the Schumacher S's. It's just one of those places where you don't really go for moves and you shouldn't go for moves. This is a better overtaken opportunity. One orange goes defensive, one goes attacking, and we're just gonna slip up the inside of Daz as they kind of just both slow each other down. Can we get a cut back on Jason? Jason's just gonna get a little bit skew with, a little bit out of shape there, which is gonna slow us both down on the exit, but we've got a little bump in the back from Cam, so uh, regaining our speed, and we're on the outside now coming into the chicane ahead of us and I just missed my breaking point and I'm just gonna murder agent in front of us and I just want to highlight this so is this new since the last update so when a car ghosts and goes through you it goes red and I've seen this a couple of times now it goes red I just want to see if you have noticed this as well in the comment section below back to the racing so uh, agent just uh, <laughs> just just off I'm so sorry but he did pump me off in a different racing event so it's 1-1 one, one. we're even but here we go we are chasing down Ronin now and uh, let's see if we can close the gap a lap later then and we've caught the uh, group in front and now uh, things are gonna get a little bit elbows out once again going basically four wide there into T1 which is a little bit crazy but you can just see the <laughs> the blues are just swarming old rocker in a third place there he is a uh, he's got a hell of a time defending against five blue cars Ronin goes into the back of Arden there and Arden then goes wide for it what really should happen there is Ronin should back off and give Arden the position back but it doesn't happen so you know that's something that we need to work on um, in future races Arden actually hits into the back of a orange driver twice and gives that position back so uh, hats off to him for good sportsmanship but uh, Ronin maybe need to work on that for next time so we are now in the hunt uh, we've got a better exit out of that corner we're just going to look up the inside going into the hairpin right up ahead a little bit early on the brakes sees uh, Ronin goes in front but he goes a little bit deep and we're going to stick on the apex and get a better run out of the corner up to the S's now he's just going to have to sit behind us like we said on lap one this is not a place for overtaking so firmly in the uh, slipstream of Rob in front as well that's going to be pretty hard for him to overtake coming up here into this tight left-hander then really have to take a lot of curb on this as well to get a good exit which we do very well nice James and coming onto the straight then can we get in the slipstream on that power early yes we can so as we are in the slipstream of the car in front we know our position is safe from behind so we don't need to worry about that which means we can solely focus on the cars in front I'm gonna break a little bit late and then I'm gonna have to react to the car in front so I'm gonna switch to the inside there and he's just gonna get held up behind Rocker so he can't go anywhere and that's gonna see us around Rob so into the final corner of the track I'm gonna go for the cutback going deeper in a later apex but you can't do that when you're in and amongst a uh, group of cars I forgot that Rob was behind me and he is entitled to go for a move especially when I've left the space open on purpose so a little bit of contact but it doesn't uh, 
doesn't affect either of us as we head down to T1 then. Once again going for the cutback a little bit wider and then on the power earlier just going to get a little bit awkward as we tap a couple of times but that means we are going to go around the outside into turn two. And now begins one of many hunts of Smirnoff. We uh, find ourselves hunting him down quite a few times. But coming into the chicane then at the end of that lap I'm just going to probably cut it by maybe a pixel and that's going to give us a second and a half penalty and I'm just going to try and serve that but coming into a breaking zone that makes serving penalties very very difficult I haven't served a penalty in ages you know we've had this new penalty system for so long now I just forgot how to serve a penalty properly which cost us a little bit more time Ronan there pulling over and serving his penalty as well obviously following in the footsteps of me but we are in the slipstream of Rocket in front are we going to go for the same move no we're going to look to the inside but no he uh, changes his line and comes across and covers it off so can we go for the same cutback move we did try it but he got a better exit this time so he's going to keep the inside and it's pretty much impossible to fight anyone around the outside of that corner so can we now get another cutback going in later here so we have a better run out of this corner which leads into this corner so we have a better run out look how much faster we are out of there i actually had to let up as well as uh, we're coming into this corner, he's just going to sort of squeeze over, squeeze me over a little bit, but we're going to be later on the brakes, and that is going to be passed. And yet again, the hunt of Smirnoff begins. Takes us a little longer to catch him this time, obviously he got into the groove, but at the end of lap 7, we uh, come across the line and onto lap 8, which is the final lap. He indicated to the right, signalling to us that he wants us to go up the inside coming into T1 so a nice bit of team communication there realising that I am faster uh, on track and uh, just wants to uh, let me through so very good drive in there very good team play and I appreciate it immensely as uh, we come across the line then and that's going to be it so Dragon in first Giza in second me in third Smirnoff in fourth Ronin in fifth Rob in sixth Cam Smith and Rocker finishing the 7th and 8th there. So a pretty dominant show there from the boys in blue as we come on to race 2, which is in the Group 3 Beetle, or Yeetle, around St. Croix B, and it's the reverse. And uh, just as they head down to T1, once again, a very clean T1. No crutches, no smashes. I think an orange car may run wide a little bit but that's it very clean so here we go what can we do from 11th position on the grid the grid was flipped and reversed from the uh, results from the previous race so that's why we're towards the back coming into t1 then just being nice and cautious on the brakes giving everyone plenty of room because you just don't want that turn one crash it makes everyone very annoyed and we've got through two now two races without a turn one crash so very very good coming into turn well Three, I would uh, call it. The two orange cars in front making contact and Nightmare Racer on the left there is just going to get sucked onto the grass and that's going to put us up to ninth place. Coming down this sweeping section of corners then, you're just going to have to use the coast and the engine brake as you change down the gears just to stabilise your car. And as we come into the right-hander here, we're going to go for that same cutback manoeuvre and uh, get a better run out onto the bridge and get past Daz. Onto the very picturesque bridge. Look at the scenery there. Blue waters, blue skies, massive mountains. The game does look very, very pretty. Heavy break in then as we come through this corner here. Very easy to understeer, hit that wall and lose a hell of a load of time as EFF underscore underscore one found out a little bit too well there, making contact with the wall. Another blind corner here. If you get on the power too early, you can see yourself in the barrier on the left there, which I have done many times myself. So behind Rob then on the straight in the slipstream, just going to settle behind. I don't want to make any movements. It's already nearly three wide coming through this fast right-hander there. And I'm just going to sit back. For example, if I'm right up the backside of Rob right now, that's only going to put him under pressure. And to be honest, if I was right behind him just then, I would have punted him into oblivion. So it's a good job. I just kept my distance and I waited for a mistake. He got a little bit of squiggle coming out of that corner and I was able to capitalize on it which is obviously the 1000 IQ play. Through this fast section though, I'm gonna just get on the power too early and go onto the grass, hit the barrier, and that's gonna slow me down lots. And Rob has got a better exit there, and he's just going past, so, you know, whatever. I didn't want that position anyway. But uh, just jumping forward a couple of corners then, he's gonna make a little bit of contact with Agent, and he's gonna run a little bit wide onto the grass, and he's just gonna slow himself down, and we're gonna take that position back. Thank you very much, Rob. 
This is a smart play though. He realizes that we can't go through here two by two, so he lets off and just follows me through this section. Very, very smart. Well done, Rob. Coming into here though, Agent's just gonna get a little bit wiggly and uh, just gonna lose a ton of time. And we're gonna go up the inside, nice and easy, up into fifth position. And the chase begins to uh, EFF in front of us. Jumping to the back straight then, this is when the first sort of event incident is going to happen. I actually ended up with this EFF driver rage quitting and saying that he can't race when the lobby is this dirty, which uh, annoyed Smirnoff. Coming into here then, he's just there's just going to be the smallest, and I, when I say the smallest bit of contact you will ever see, it really was. So we're going to have a look at it. This is Smirnoff's point of view. I think the contact was completely 50-50. I think EFF turned in and made contact and Smirnoff slid a little bit and made contact. So we look at it from his point of view. He's come in and then after the slightest contact, he just seems to drive straight off. Then when he's coming back on, he's obviously frustrated, over revs the car, spins the wheels and he's uh, into the wall. So looking at it in slow motion, as he comes in, you can see what I mean by he turns in on him and then Smirnoff slides a little bit. But it's right now when he gets back on the power, he literally just accelerates off. So in my eyes, it was nothing more than a racing incident and I do believe that EFF could have held it on the track if he tried. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. But right now, once again, we are hunting down Smirnoff and coming into this uh, bridge section right now, coming into the right-hand corner. Smirnoff's just going to run a little bit wide, going to get caught on the grass and just going to put himself into the barrier coming onto the bridge, which is going to give us the third position, the podium spot, and now the hunt for uh, Ronin begins. The hunt for Ronin, just like Smirnoff, but he's a little bit further away. But anyway, coming onto the bridge now, I don't get as good an exit as I wanted. Rob gets a better one, he's just going to give me that little bit of a boost. That teamwork coming into play as uh, C.S. Smith is actually the fastest car on the track right now. So having that buffer between him and myself is very, very nice. But Smith is just going to run a little bit wide, get on the power a little bit too soon. We talked about it earlier and look how much time that has lost him to uh, Rob uh, in front of him. So there we go, and that's sort of his onslaught over. I think he lost a bit of confidence there and he never really got back from that. So uh, now the uh, real battle commences here as so we actually caught up Ronin. I think he made a couple of mistakes, maybe panicking a little bit as me and Rob both hunt him down. Look at that, look, Smith has completely dropped off the face of the earth, but still in fifth position. But coming into this corner here, we're gonna go for, yes, the classic cutback, breaking a little bit earlier, going for that later apex, and we're just going to get a better run out the corner. I think I'm going to make a video on it. It's such a good freaking move, and I don't think most people know about it. I'm going to make a video on it, guys. It's such a good freaking move, and it's so simple to execute. But anyway, up into second place, and as we come around this corner, that's actually going to be the final lap. Arden hasn't gone over the line yet, so he is going to claim first position and we're going to come in for a second hard four all the way and coming over the line it's going to be Arden, James, Ronin, Rob, Smith, Giza, Dragon and Daz. So then race three in the MX-5 Cup car one of the more recently added cars and it's going to be around Brands Hatch Indy so the shorter version of the Brands Hatch course and uh, coming through into turn one, we can just see the beautiful blue and orange liveried cars. There is gonna be a little bit of commotion, but it's not gonna kill anyone as you would expect from a T1 at Brands Hatch. But there we go, nice, uh, nice start as well as we look up the inside of Daz and up the outside of Ronin, but we're just gonna settle in. We don't want any commotion ourselves as we look forward down the track and there is a little bit of argy-bargy going to go up the inside of Giza into the hairpin right here. Ronin obviously come to play. He's pretty much all over the track there. He went from the middle to the outside to the inside all in one move. But we are up to eighth place, so a couple of places gained. That's always good, especially in uh, such quick succession. Through this next corner, though, it's all going to get a little bit awkward between the Jev boys here. I think Rob goes in the back of Agent and then pulls to the left and tries to slow down to give him <laughs> to give him the position back. And then it's just going to be absolute pinball. And actually, Rob comes off the worst from it all. Norwegian on the inside, though, absolutely loving it as he probably goes from about 10th to 5th on one corner. So he's loving it. We're uh, still in 8th after all of that. 
And uh, coming into Paddock Hill Bend then, is there going to be any drama? We're going to go for that cut back. Just see Agent go a little bit wide there. So we're just going to go up the inside, nice and simple. No punting him this time. Was going to go to the inside there, but didn't want to go three wide into the hairpin. And that space is just going to invite Geezer up the inside. Good, clean move. He saw the space and he absolutely sent it. So hats off to him. But coming through this left-hand corner, he's just going to go a little bit wide. And we're going to get a better run out. And that's going to see us up the inside, up to seventh once again. Coming through this corner, nice and easy. Always flat through here, late on the brakes. And we said, oh, and uh, the Norwegian just decides to just drive himself into the sand realm. See you later, Norwegian. Thanks for playing. And that's us up into sixth position then. And uh, can we go about catching Ronin in front of us? So, jumping a couple of laps ahead. Because the, uh, the lap times are so close around this track, it really makes it difficult to catch any car in front of you especially when they're uh, in the slipstream. So a little bit of contact there from Dragon and Ronin, and then coming into this left-hand corner, it's just gonna get a little bit silly. Dragon just throws out the inside. We've talked about it in Discord already. He should just wait and then get a better exit. And two, we're on the same team. We don't need to be battling. Look at the, uh, the gap that the orange cars have now got between Dragon and them. So going one lap further, same position, it's just me and Dragon. I'm gonna let him come over to the racing line and we can both get that good run out. We both do, but he gets caught up and goes into the back of Rocker and that sort of jeopardizes his run and we just go up the inside. So hopefully there a lesson has been learned. Jumping forward a lap, we're gonna have two positions for free, basically, as a Nightmare Racer just wants to send himself to the Sand Realm. Thanks, buddy. And we just find ourselves up the inside of Rocker. So two for the price of one on the last corner of the track then. On the start, finish straight, coming into Paddock Hill then. A uh, little bit of contact, a little bit more contact. Rocker then loves the look of my racing line, even with all the space in the world out on the left. Maybe he's just a little bit sick of me passing him because I did pass him quite a few times over these events. But uh, jumping towards the end of this lap then, Coming round the final corner, once again hunting down Smirnoff for the victory, my uh, PlayStation just crashes. It just crashes. The, the internet doesn't go out, the electricity doesn't go out, the PlayStation itself crashes. I've never had it before in all the time that I've had the PlayStation. It just crashes. How absolutely unbelievable is that? The uh, events were, there was four races in the events and it just meant that I couldn't take part in the last one either. But there we go, in a puff of dust, we are out of the race. So Smirnoff comes home in first, then Dragon, Ronan, Rob, Rocker, Agent, Arden and Daz. I'm not sure what happened in the final race. The final race was a GRB rally around Sardinia. But all I know is that the uh, Jeff Team Racing had a victory over the driver's room once again. So there we go, I hope you enjoyed that little highlight reel from my perspective of the events. If you do want to join the Jeff Team Racing, jump in Discord and make yourself known. It's a community team and we're always looking to bolster our ranks. But right now, thank you so much for watching, liking and subscribing. Thank you to the channel members for doing what you do and we'll see you in the next one.